So, I said I was gonna make a video about this thing, and here it is. A video about my techniques RSB18 stereo cassette deck. Here, as you can see, it is quite a peculiar stereo cassette deck. Why? Because it has both Dolby and DBX. Dolby C, Dolby B, and DBX. Quite peculiar. Aside from that, let's look at the front. We have the power button, which turns it on and off, of course. We have an eject button. We have what look to be classic piano controls, but they are not classic piano key controls. They are actually soft piano key controls. They actually control a mechanism. They're not directly attached to the mechanism. There's some some mechanical thingy majigger that actually does that for you, so you don't have to, to apply much force at all. Let me demonstrate it, that by pushing the play button. As you can see, it's kind of mechanical, but it's not mechanical, not fully mechanical. Same with the pause button, the pause button doesn't just it actually has a, a soft action, as you can see there. So we have a plastic cover, completely clear, and we have a sales sticker which wasn't removed from this unit, and I'm not gonna remove it, which boasts says that it boasts. Dolby B and C noise reduction, Q, Q and review, and DBX. The Q and review feature is an, an annoyance for me because you have when you push the play button, if you want to rewind from the play button, you can't. Both are pressed. As you can see, you can rewind or fast forward. Without the play, I mean, you have to press stop to actually rewind or fast forward without the heads touching the tape itself, which wears it out. So that Q feature isn't something I am really proud about on this deck. That noise in the background is my cat eating right there. Next, we have a rec, a record light, just a little red LED. We have a tape counter, which is missing the front cover. I guess it has a, it had a front cover at some point. We have one touch recording, Q and review, Dolby and DBX noise reduction. Pretty much what is what was said on the sticker. We have a VFD, which is really nice. A uh, level meter, which goes up to plus 9 dB. I don't really like it that it only goes up to plus 9 dB. I would have, li I would have liked it to go uh, a little bit above that, like plus 15 or so, because there's tapes that can take that much level. We have our buttons down here for tape select, normal, chrome or metal. Yes, this does record into metal tapes. Haven't tested it, but I trust it being a techniques unit. Dolby C and B, which actually works really, really well. They both work really well. Impressive that Dolby works well on a deck. Of course, out, no noise reduction. DBX on, noise reduction, and line and microphone input selectors for recording from these two jacks, which are the microphone jacks, or the line input in, on the back. 
Then we have this potentiometer, which is the main reason that I took this thing out of my system because it is dirty. But here we have the input level, uh, volume control for the record, for recording, and here we have the balance for the recording too. It, it doesn't work on the playback. These controls are a little bit hard to move. Hope contact cleaner fixes that. Then we have a headphone output which will blow your freaking ears, eardrums out. It will blow them with modern headphones. This thing is designed to drive 8 ohm headphones and it doesn't have any volume control so if you plug in modern 32 ohm headphones you're gonna basically blow your eardrums out this thing is line level output but amplified let's turn it around to see the back now I have modified the back a little bit we have our power cord input we have this which says service only it really is just a hole that leads up to the motor which is right up here to the motor to adjust the speed so if you have a really 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 long screwdriver you can stick it on there and adjust the speed we have the Dolby license we have the DBX license we have the techniques model number and it, this is in Spanish, it just, it just means cassette recorder Panasonic Spain Limited Made in Spain Which is weird, but hey, it was made in Spain And then we should have this line in and line out There were permanent wires attached to this With RCA plugs on the ends I removed those because I hate hard-wired devices that are not turntables. I hate them. So I put a set of RCA jacks in the back for the line in and the line out. And that's about it for the outside. It is really dirty on the top. I should clean it. And now we'll tear it apart and we'll see how it looks on the inside. Here is the inside of the cassette deck. Now, uh, as you can see, it isn't top quality at all. It is pretty cheaply made, but the components are actually all really good. Capacitors, as you would expect, are all Matsushita, aka Panasonic. Uh, capacitor, so the capacitors are all great capacitors. Uh, you have shielded cable whenever you need it which is right from the heads coming from the heads this, this goes to the erase head and this goes to the playback and record head and there is shielded cable for that we have this little daughter board right here which I think is responsible for the DBX Yes, it has a DBX IC on it. Let's see if we can focus on there. Nope, we can't. But it says DBX right there. So this little daughter board is responsible for the DBX noise reduction. Then we have the Dolby chips right here. To TEA... 0665 chips it looks like 18th week on 18th week of 1984 so this cassette deck is pretty much yeah it's I'd say I'd call it modern anything past 1982 I, I call modern here we have this tiny transformer right here with some taps Going over to the power delivery right here, as you can see, nice filter caps, none of them have leaked, they haven't been attached to the board with any of that uh, gunk that turns conductive, 
so that is really good and we have a lot of adjustments actually we have a bias adjust adjustment one for each channel record gain we have playback gain right there we have timing adjustment uh, I don't really know what this is for I don't know if this just regulates this is just for the speed of the motor but that doesn't make sense because the motor itself has I don't know here we have the meter adjustments for well adjusting the level of the meters and yeah that's about all of all of the circuitry well we have the meters right here running off of dual PA6146 chips let me turn around BA6146 sorry that's a pretty jelly bean part for uh, level meters uh, I've seen it in a couple of um, uh, Pioneer decks and amplifiers too here we have our a mechanical switch for the record and playback head to switch from the playback amp to the record amp which is something really good I like it I like that it doesn't use a relay right here because I have in fact I'm using this cassette deck because my the relay the playback and uh, record relay on my another deck the one that I was using up until now which is a lot better than this one by the way which is this Hitachi D85S deck um, the relay playback and uh, record relay on this thing failed and it is some proprietary kind of relay which I can't seem to fix um, I've tried cl cleaning the contacts I mean, the problem itself is I am losing one channel the, I'm, I am losing the left channel randomly I have tried cleaning the contacts, I have tried uh, even sanding them down not up until the point where the coating was gone but a little bit and I just cannot seem to make this thing work properly, I just can't so yeah, right here is it's now in storage with its tuner and the amp I am missing and my old turntable too right here so now onto the mechanism now that we've finished with the electronics we have this it is a single motor mechanism and we have let's take it from the back of it we have a 12 volt motor right here these cables I mean they're dangerously close these are the main cables that go to the transformer uh, we have a DC motor typical with your speed adjustment right in there and it is driving both as you can see it has dual uh, belts it has one driving the mechanism and one that drives this flywheel which is actually pretty heavy and no complaints at all with that that is for sure this flywheel even though it is a little bit small on the small side it is really really heavy I don't know what it is made of but it is really heavy let's turn the thing on so you can see how the mechanism works as you can see this thing drives this shaft which I don't know what it is for it moves that pin left to right uh, I think that's for the auto stop feature and there's also all of the gears inside which make it drive both of the of the, the take up and the supply spool reels 
Here we have the flywheel. No problems with the speed on this at all. I haven't noticed any wall and any on flutter or anything. I have noticed I haven't noticed anything. And the belts seem to be pretty darn good on it. They don't seem to be rotting or anything or turning into goo. They seem to be pretty good. So yeah, that's about it. Now I am gonna dismantle this part, the front panel, I'm going to take it apart to get to this circuit board right here with the potentiometer made by Elna by the way which is, well, should be known by audiophiles I thought, I think there was, there's one more board made by Elna but audiophiles should recognize that brand mainly for their capacitors but hey look I, I hadn't noticed this there's a lot of SMD stuff early SMD stuff on the back of this board this is the other board that was made by Elna so yeah here's the inside of it now I'm gonna take this apart oh it looks like I, you don't have to take the whole Looks like you don't have to take the whole front apart. You only need to release these, well, release these two catches right here. This one and that one. And you have to remove this screw and that screw. And this board just comes out. It even has a plug right down there. So I like that. So let's remove the board and put some contact cleaner into that potentiometer. The potentiometers themselves and here's the contact cleaner. Mm, this is three three in one, tres en uno. This is the brand that WD-40 uses in Spain but this is contact cleaner as you can see. And I also now that I had it apart, I had the display apart, I have also put a little blue uh, filter on the VFD and it looks now a lot cooler, in my opinion. I think it looks a lot cooler. Now, I have put this little filter, as you can see, a blue filter with some adhesive tape. Uh, that, that came out of uh, of an old uh, Pioneer cassette deck. So now let's I'll just spray these and put it all back together. All put together and working, and boy, does it look great with that blue filter on the on the display. It looks awesome. I am testing playback right now, it is copyrighted music, of course, so I cannot check that. I'm gonna use this tape, I have site A is full, I have uh, the Alan Parsons project uh, iRobot on the A side, but the B side is blank, so I'll use that to test. I know I can record over whatever I put in there later because well it's a free new X Pro it's pretty much the best chrome tape ever made as you can see by the levels it is hitting right here without Dolby by the way this is no Dolby no noise reduction whatsoever and it sounds perfectly let me I'll, I'll, I'll show you a snippet now this thing, this system that I'm playing it on is very bass heavy, very very bass heavy. What are you doing with the cable? Hello there. This system is very bass heavy so it's gonna sound like crap and now we have a cat eating which is gonna make it sound even worse but there we go. Hope I don't get a copyright strike for that. 
that's a little snippet. This thing sounds great. It sounds great for the for really for for what it is, which is a single motor drive uh, system, single capstan, uh, dual head cassette deck, which is pretty much just a run of the. It will be a run of the mill cassette deck if it weren't because of the Dolby and DBX. So let's test the record capabilities of it. I'll rewind, well, fast forward the tape in this case and record on side B. I'll, and we'll see. I miss the light in there that my D85S, this one, had. This thing has a little light right there in the center. I miss that. This thing used to have a a reflective tape, but that came off. So you cannot really tell where the tape is if you don't look, look really, really close. But yeah. Well, I'll test the... Whoa, focus, focus, focus. I'll test the... Um, the record capabilities of this of this thing. Let's see how it sounds. So I have made the record test and let's see how it sounds. Pretty good. It's pretty good. It sounds really good, so that's fixed. So now this thing is working in optimal condition. It's working like brand new, pretty much. Uh, maybe even better, thanks to those RCA cable, RCA plugs that I put there, because the RCA cables it came attached with were pretty crappy. And now the display looks freaking awesome with that blue tint on it so yeah that's about it thank you for watching and well I'll say the typical stuff youtubers say like comment subscribe whatever do whatever you want uh, see you next time bye